Hello, everyone. I am going to read you the children's storybook called The Teacher's March, How, so How Selma's Teachers Changed History. This is written by Sandra Neal Wallace and Rich Wallace and illustrated by Charlie Palmer. I'm recording this so I can put it on canvas because I am going to have a sub. So here you go. I love this book. I bought it because I love the artwork in it. It's definitely got this like 60s vibe, right? Let's see if I can record and read at the same time. Okay. Reverend F.D. Reese taught science at R.B. Hudson High School, but his favorite subject was freedom. He believed that everyone was a first-class citizen, just like the Constitution stated. To be treated as less than equal, that just wasn't right. With fire in his eyes, Reverend Reese led marchers to the courthouse to register to vote. Troublemakers, that's what the police called the marchers. Reverend Reese knew that was a lie. The marchers just wanted to vote like everybody else. But in Selma, Alabama, segregation kept black people and white people apart and billy clubs kept black people from voting. Y'all know this is true because we've been reading it in March, right? You think one of these is Sheriff Clark? Ooh, look at that. It says Sheriff Clark, the first couple words. Sheriff Clark's cheeks boiled red whenever he spotted Reverend Reese and the marchers. His deputies blocked the marble strips of the steps of the courthouse. The sheriff swung his club at the reverend like he was a baseball, and that kept most people away. Even if they made it into the courthouse, the reverend knew what would happen. You must take a voting test, a test impossible to pass. How many drops of water are in the Alabama River? How could anyone answer a question like that? Reverend Reese pulled his trench coat over his bruises and kept on marching and talking about freedom. He had to find a way to make their voices heard. He needed a triumphant idea. Walking through the school one day, the reverend found his idea in every classroom. What if teachers marched? Not just one teacher like him, but hundreds of teachers. Leaders, that's what people called the teachers. The teachers were the somebody, somebodies of the community. College educated, shiny leather shoes, suits and Sunday brooches at seven days a week. I think that's supposed to be brooches, but it's spelled B-R-O-O-C-H-E-S. We'll have to look it up. No group like that. Maybe it's meaning, I don't know. We could look it up, brooches or brooches. No group like that had marched for freedom before. If the teachers marched, people would notice and change would come. But in that summer of 1964, a judge declared marching and talking about voting rights against, law, against the law in Selma. Don't get involved in that mess, some people warned. It's too dangerous. And that stopped meetings and marches to the courthouse. How would Reverend Reese convince the teachers to march now? He searched for a glorious opportunity. Just before Christmas, he huddled by the TV watching the great civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talk about freedom. The Reverend's face lit up like a Christmas tree. Who better than Dr. King to turn things around and help convince the teachers to march? That night, Reverend Reese wrote a letter to Dr. King inviting him to Selma. He signed it, yours for better citizens. Some people thought there's no way Dr. King will come to Selma, but Dr. King said yes. Some preachers feared they'd be arrested if Dr. King spoke in their churches about voting rights but not the pastor of Brown Chapel. He gave Reverend Reese permission to have Dr. King speak at his church. When the day arrived, clouds hung so heavy they covered the steeples of Brown Chapel. Of the, of Brown Chapel. Reverend Hello. Reese. Hi. Sorry, did I ruin your video? Yes, you just ruined my video. I'm sorry, you can crop it and then do the next one. Oh, I don't want to crop it. <laughs> happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday, Izzy. This is just like in class. What kind of soda do you want? Uh, Dr. Pepper. Did we win the video? I mean, did we win the yes, game? Yes, we won. What was the score? Uh, it was 47, 47 to 40. All right. Video? Okay. Video? I hope you're all fast forwarding. It's Wait, Izzy's birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> hey, this is Mason Dunford. I'm Isabella Black. Here's in my mother. You're the best friend. Hey. Hey. Woo! <laughs> Someday you'll be in ninth grade too, begging me for snacks. <laughs> Izzy's only getting a snack because it's her birthday. Yay! Yay! Yeah, yeah, love you. Woo! Goodbye. Birthday, love you. Bye. Okay, bye. Thanks for the. Thanks for the update. No, you here. God. You can all take a Twizzler and share them. <laughs> yes! Oh, get out! I'm trying to read. Bye. Miss Gold, where can I find this video public? No. It's good. You won't see it because it's gonna be on canvas. Okay. If they're getting a treat, I'm getting a treat. Here we go.
All right. When the day arrived, clouds hung so heavy, they covered the steeples of Brown Chapel. Love you. Bye. Happy birthday. Reverend Reese worried that nobody would show up. The night before, a soldier came, a soldier home. The night before, a soldier home on leave for Christmas had thrown a smoke bomb near the church, hoping to scare Dr. King away. The bomb didn't scare anyone away. 700 people squeezed in a brown chapel waiting for Dr. King. 15-year-old Joyce Parrish sat in her usual row with her mother, Too Sweet. When Dr. King swung through the doors of Brown Chapel, Joyce and Too Sweet leapt to their feet and collapsed. Dr. King said people shouldn't be afraid of being arrested. They should go to jail by the thousands to defend the right to vote. And he wasn't just talking about committed marchers like Reverend Reese. He meant everybody in Brown Chapel. At the next meeting, Reverend Reese spoke to the teachers filling the church pews. He told them about his triumphant idea. We're not just teachers in the classroom, but leaders in the community, he proclaimed. People are looking to us to give leadership. We are going to march. The teachers fidgeted as if they hadn't heard. Some still, some sat still in a stat, some sat still as statues. When time got this quiet, Reverend Weiss always said, you could hear a rat walk on cotton. I'll believe it when I see it, grumbled a churchgoer. Teachers may be the somebody somebodies, and they taught school to thousands of kids, but when it came to marching, they didn't have the courage. That's what people whispered. Reverend Weiss noticed that the teachers were afraid. He knew what they were thinking. If we march, we could get arrested. We could go to jail. We could lose our jobs. Teachers had to be sensible. The white superintendent of schools hired them because they had the good sense not to march. But if the teachers didn't march, nothing would change. The Reverend needed a guarantee from the teachers. Fast. He waved a sheet of paper in the air. If you will participate and teachers march, sign this list, he urged. Show up and show out. Reverend Reese explained that if both parents taught school, then only one would march. That way, somebody could take care of the kids if the other parent went to jail. So where did that leave Too Sweet? She taught school, but she was also a mother, the only parent, period. There, there was Joyce's grandmother who cooked the food, but Too Sweet earned the money for it. First teacher to sign the list was Coach Lawrence Higgins. No, Lawrence Huggins, excuse me. He was tired of telling kids about the Constitution, freedom and justice for all, but not defending it for himself. Another teacher signed up, and another, until more than 100 teachers had pledged to march. Before the meeting was over, Too Sweet stood up. She signed her name to the list. The march was set for January 22nd. When Joyce woke up that morning, her mother kept busy in the kitchen. Without saying a word, Too Sweet put a peanut butter sandwich and a toothbrush in a brown paper bag. She'd need those things in jail. The teachers had promised Reverend Reese they'd march to the courthouse that afternoon, but Joyce grew worried. Would Too Sweet be, be coming home that night? Joyce grabbed her mother and held her tight. Later that day, Reverend Reese waited by the steps of the school with his list of names. Classes had ended, but the teachers weren't lined up. Had they changed their minds? Had they decided not to march? Reverend Reese wouldn't blame them if they had. All week, he'd seen people getting arrested for trying to register to vote. Sheriff Clark herded them into an alley, blocked with rope like they were cattle. He locked them in jail. Even Dr. King was beaten and bruised. If that could happen to somebody like Dr. King, would the teachers be brave enough to march? The wind rustled Reverend Reese's list of names, but he kept his eyes on the school doors. He had faith in the teachers. They'd given him their word. They'd signed the list, but he was standing alone. I love this picture right here. Suddenly, the doors burst open. One teacher walked out, then another. They held toothbrushes in the air, ready to go to jail for freedom. Soon, 104 teachers strutted down the steps, their toothbrushes gleaming like swords in the Selma sun. The teachers are going to march, kids shouted, rousing people from the neighborhood. Reverend Reese called Coach Huggins to the front of the line. Coach was strong and fearless. He taught weightlifting to the football team and was in great shape. Reverend Reese wanted him close by in case there was trouble. Whenever anyone marched, there was bound to be trouble. Could you believe it? Grown-ups murmured rushing from their homes. The teachers are going to march. Reverend Reese told the kids to wait at Brown Chapel, but Joyce paced nervously along the sidewalk, searching for Too Sweet. Would her mother be safe? If Too Sweet went to jail, they'd be anything but free. If Too Sweet got fired from her job, they'd be asking for handouts, food, clothing, everything. We are going to keep walking until we reach the courthouse, Reverend Reese reminded the teachers. Two by two, they started marching. The Reverend walked in front, his hands clenched in his trench coat pockets. Coach Huggins, tall and strong. Too sweet, poised and defiant. Teachers, young and old, clutching paper bags filled with sandwiches for jail. The teachers didn't breathe a word. They didn't smile or sing freedom songs, but you could hear the courage in their leather shoes turning up the red dirt road and see the bravery behind their Sunday brooches catching the light of the sun. 
When the teachers reached the white section of town, red dirt changed to pavement. Crowds gathered like storm clouds. Shopkeepers hurried out of their stores. They glared at the teachers, trying to rattle their courage. What is it they want, they wondered. The teachers kept marching. What they wanted was that everyone had the right to vote. As they turned onto Alabama Avenue, the teachers spotted the 13 steps of green marble leading up to the courthouse. Sheriff Clark and his deputies stood at the top of those steps. When the sheriff saw so many teachers marching toward him, his eyes filled with rage. We are here to register, Reverend Reese announced. You can't make a plaything out of the corridors of this courthouse, the sheriff boomed. You think you can make it to a Disneyland? We have a right to be here, the reverend insisted. I will give you one minute to clear the steps, Clark roared, or I'll have you all arrested. The teachers folded their arms. Some gripped their paper bags tighter, but they refused to move. Ten seconds, yelled the sheriff. Reverend Reese and the teachers stood on the courthouse steps as still as the Statue of Liberty. Time's up, now move it, Sheriff Clark and his deputies reached for their billy clubs. The sheriff jabbed Coach Huggins in the stomach, then Reverend Reese. The teachers fell down the steps like dominoes. Reverend Reese led the teachers back up again. Sheriff Clark grew so angry that he shoved the teachers down the steps even harder the second time. The school superintendent rushed out of the courthouse. He stared at the teachers. He could fire each and every one of them. Reverend Reese, Coach Huggins, Too Sweet. Teachers stared right back at him. They looked into the angry eyes of Sheriff Clark. Go ahead, Reverend Reese kept thinking. Arrest us. This wasn't Disneyland. This was real life. First class citizens. That's what they were. Nothing less. The Constitution guaranteed it. They stepped out for their right to vote, ready to be handcuffed, ready to lose their jobs for that right. But if the superintendent fired every teacher lined up at the courthouse, who would teach the students? He would have to shut down the schools. Then he would be out of a job. Reverend Reese knew it. So did Sheriff Clark. The sheriff put away his billy club. The handcuffs stayed clasped to his waist. Reverend Reese and his triumphant idea had gained a glorious victory. Although the teachers didn't register to vote that day, the sheriff had the good sense not to arrest them, and the superintendent had the good sense not to fire them. With their heads held high, the teachers walked proudly to Brown Chapel. The church thundered with the sounds of young voices singing freedom songs. The teachers are coming back, somebody shouted. Everyone stood and sang louder. Joyce couldn't see the teachers, but she cheered anyway. For Reverend Reese, for Coach Huggins, for Too Sweet. Too Sweet had to be there. Did you see my teacher marching? Kids gushed across the wooden pews. As soon as the swing singing stopped, Joyce spun around, searching for Too Sweet. When she found her, Joyce ran and hugged her mother and wouldn't let go. When Dr. King came back to preach that night, he praised Reverend Reese and the teachers for making civil rights history. No group of leaders had risked their jobs before by marching. We were like giants, Reverend Reese said with a smile. Great giants. Because Reverend Reese and the teachers marched, other groups started marching for their right to vote. Beauticians and barbers marched, then the undertakers marched. Because Reverend Reese and the teachers marched, they became heroes to their students. It didn't matter that the kids were too young to vote. They intended to march for their teachers and their parents' right to vote. The students left school after roll call when the teachers turned their backs to gaze out the window. I'm going to get, your civil, get you your civil rights, they promised their new heroes. They marched to the courthouse with determination in their eyes and ankle socks and sneakers on their feet. Joyce marched too for her mother too sweet. The Selma marchers filled the jails by the thousands. Americans noticed. They wondered why respectable citizens in suits and dresses and school kids carrying books were jailed. The President of the United States noticed. He pushed for a new voting rights law. That summer of 1965, the Voting Rights Act passed. It made certain that nobody had to take a test just to vote. On one August morning, Reverend Reese, Too Sweet, and other teachers walked down Alabama Avenue. They climbed the steps of the federal building across from the courthouse. Inside, there were no voting tests, no billy clubs, no alleys marked with rope. All the teachers had to do was sign their names, and they were registered to vote. The first thing they did was vote Sheriff Clark out of office. And then it gives you a bunch of author's notes, illustrator's notes in the back, which I have this book in the classroom if you want to see it. But yay, they got rid of Sheriff Clark. Woo, woo. Yay for teachers and toothbrushes. Great example to us.